Welcome to the February edition of the Chicago Crossing Model Railroad uh, Update Series. Today's edition brought to you by the Milwaukee Road, a classic Chicago railroad. If you've ever seen some of the great uh, shelf layouts like the Kingsbury Branch model, then you know that primarily features Milwaukee Road. And what a great Chicago railroad it is. It's defunct, so hence about all it can do now is bring you this edition of Chicago Crossing. Anyway, not a lot of time uh, over the month to do too much work on the layout. I, in reality, had about just a weekend to do things, but within that weekend, I think I made pretty good use of the time. Most of my work centered here in the uh, refinery area, and you might notice a little bit more vegetation in one part of it, and that's because I was able to uh, complete all of the uh, updated and detailed scenicing over to the right side of that branch line track uh, across from uh, the scrapyard. That was pretty much a weekend project, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So just to give you a little bit of, a, of an overhead view, the idea was to create an area that looked more or less like a wetland or a ravine where water might be draining uh, both from the refinery as well as uh, off of that branch line track and then collecting in some low areas. What I did here is I scraped away some of the turf, largely cinders. It was just functionally scenic over here to look decent but not to look particularly interesting. So I scraped away certain areas where I wanted to pour resin later to uh, signify the lowest uh, spots in there. And then uh, after that, I began to apply static grass. You can see a whole bunch of it there. That's long seven millimeter stuff with some four millimeter mixed in. And then a whole bunch of clumps that were kind of uh, flown in by hand, uh, just dropped in onto some map media with a little bit of vacuuming just to catch some of the spare strands of grass. In addition, because <laughs> if you study enough photos of uh, uh, southwestern or northwestern Indiana, southeastern uh, Chicago, you notice there's a lot of illegal dumping in the area, and so we might as well model that as well. Here you can see there are uh, things like a bunch of broken up concrete, um, rocks, aggregates, pallets, barrels, and one of those crates thrown into the water. Uh, that crate in particular is a 3D printed item that I razor sawed in half at an angle in order to make it look like it was partially submerged into the swamp. So once uh, those layers were down, I also added in some of these brown uh, plants that you can see around the periphery here, basically uh, trying to mimic uh, photos of the area where you have a whole bunch of, you know, little spits with dead plants and things like that. There's a couple of really pretty flowering plants that are kind of sitting in the swamp next to the tire as well, next to that barrel. And all of this is to create a, an image of some fairly unrestrained foliage. Now, once all of the ground cover was laid down and before I actually uh, poured the resin, I airbrushed all of the turf and all of the scenery here to try to blend it as much as possible. That's something I do every time I lay down uh, stuff like static grass, and I even redid that over here. Uh, there are successive layers of airbrushing on this, all very, very dilute uh, Tamiya paints uh, using both earth, buff, and uh, field green as well. And so that helps to make sure that even though you can have some variety, like a little cluster of kind of deadish plants over there, overall, everything looks consistent. And that includes all of this junk over here. Everything there was uh, sprayed extensively with earth to help uh, both highlight things like that dark weathered wood, that's all just real wood with washes on top of it, but also these rocks just to create a common shade or a common tone for blending. The areas where uh, the puddles were going to go or the swamps or whatever you want to call them, that was faux painted uh, to simulate some level of depth and then I used Envirotech, uh, or Envirotex, I should say, uh, resin, and colored that kind of with an olive green, uh, just at very dilute levels, poured it, 
and uh, put in another layer today as well. As you can see, also some bin blocks because <laughs> what would the south of Chicago be without more bin blocks? Generally speaking, what you end up getting though is a really nice scene. You can kind of approach it like this, almost as if you were taking a photo of it. And depending on where you zoom in, you can see a bunch of young trees, a bunch of untended grasses, and you know the shiny glossiness of water. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. For me, that was a, a nice learning experience, how to do this sort of thing in a very, very small scale, like not the Chicago River. And for that, really, you just, you can't pour. You have to take a little bit on a stick or something like that and just drop it in and let it diffuse and then you just blow on it to get rid of the bubbles. So with that in mind, uh, now I've got a nicely scenic swamp area. And right next to that swamp area, as I mentioned last time, I was going to try to get working on this fence. The fence is a gold metal models fence. And because of uh, the material that it's made of, which is basically metal, uh, it was extremely shiny, and that is not realistic. Uh, fencing like this is made of galvanized steel. It's not made of you know some kind of shiny material like aluminum or silver or God knows what else. So in this case, uh, what I did is I airbrushed everything uh, NATO black, and that provided uh, just kind of a shadow. It sort of darkened it down, much like uh, the wheels of a modern locomotive where you uh, see that they've been, you know, reduced in, in color so they don't shine. So on top of that, after uh, clear coating the whole thing, uh, then I sprayed either a combination of uh, gray-blue from Vallejo or just mixed in some light gray Tamiya paints. I did both, really, uh, just because the Vallejo didn't give me quite the coverage I wanted to. So then I used a Tamiya light gray. And when combined with uh, over the black, you get a nice depth of surface. And you also get a color that's much more akin to galvanized fencing. So I really would encourage anybody who's working with the gold metal model stuff to actually paint the fencing. Make sure you clear coat it beforehand so, or prime it uh, appropriately so you get a little bit of tooth on the thing. I bet you could also maybe sand it with a fine sandpaper to help create some tooth as well. Otherwise the paint just sloughs off and it becomes frustrating. Um, in addition to uh, getting the fence painted, I also used uh, some cray paper, which is basically just uh, the same kind of stuff if you get a gift bag on Christmas and you pull out that kind of white, uh, thin paper. I airbrushed that uh, field green and uh, then cut it into uh, these kind of squares to simulate a tarp that's put over a uh, fence both for either restricting visual access to the area as well as just to provide a windbreak for people who are working there. So as you can see, that creates a really, really nice effect. This is actually a trick I learned uh, watching Boomer dioramas where uh, you get a translucent thing that actually looks like a tarp. And because it's crepe paper, it wrinkles and folds really, really easily. And so that gives you a very, very nice uh, impression of tarps over along these fences. The other nice thing is, you know, these tarps don't stay on forever. Sometimes their anchor points happen to uh, get shorn off, and so they'll actually start to flip down like that. So you can model that in a very, very nice, scalable way. So for N-Scale, I'm really impressed with how uh, otherwise what was an HO trick actually works and scales appropriately to the fence. So that's really about it for uh, this week's uh, or this month's edition of Chicago Crossing Railroad Update. Hopefully in March, a few more videos for you. Still working on the uh, Metra uh, video for all of the Chicago passenger service that I've got around. I'll try to get that for you. And then, of course, looming in the distance is the big umber elephant that really needs to get taken care of, which is the grain elevator tower. You can see I've masked off all the windows in preparation for airbrushing. And... Well, if I remember exactly what I did on the silos, then I think I should be able to get a nice effect on the tower as well. So that'll be it for this month. Catch you next.